So how did that begin? Well, that started because, you know, I did the Masters at, when it was at Bath, the Masters um, the, the <clears throat> of, course, of Cultural and, and of Astronomy and Astrology, it was just called, and now it's moved with Mick Campion, it's moved to Wales. Um, and um, one of the one of my papers that I wrote was about Morphic residents and Morphic fields, and um, we had Rupert actually come and give us a lecture as well, Rupert Sheldrake. So I'd, I'd already got interested in that, and I was looking at, um, I don't know if you've studied spiral dynamics, that's, that's Ken Wilbur. That, that's, uh, well, he wrote a book about it, it wasn't him that started it, it was some, Claire Graves is the guy that started spiral dynamics, which is really interesting if you're an astrologer. But um, so I got, I was getting interested in that and in the middle of all that series was upgraded. Well, at least Pluto was downgraded. So, um, and I was in the middle of writing an essay, I think on one of my papers on Uranus around about the, that time. And I was looking at, at when a planet was discovered, um, you know, what happens in history. So, I, and I related that to, to morphic fields and how they get upgraded and how they change. Um, so that was the kind of the background for looking at that. And I thought, ah, oh, this is interesting that, that Pluto is getting downgraded because everybody was having all these t-shirts like Pluto is so a planet and, you know, bring Pluto back. And, but nobody was talking about Ceres. So I thought, well, what about Ceres? So, and she'd been an asteroid, you know, since the 50s. But when she was discovered in 1850, she was a planet. And then they had all these other asteroids discovered in between, and it was like all these pesky women, you know, <laughs> coming coming into the fold that were all planets. So I think they thought we can't have all these women as planets; we're going to do something. <laughs> so um, they were all made asteroids, you know, for the asteroid belt. So that's what got me all the 23rd of August 2006, and not all the astronomers agreed, but you know, basically she was then on the same level as Pluto. So I started. That's how I got into it. Was starting to see what she's about and um and um what did that actually mean you know in the world and in the consciousness level so i was looking at this kind of consciousness levels so um yeah that's how it started and um it got really interesting because it, it's uh, there was only there wasn't much material the only book really was demetra's book which was the asteroid goddesses mm -hmm. and there was some other material but most of it is about the myth of Persephone, and most of it stops at um, um, well, they talk about Ceres being the goddess of the grain and the earth mother and the and the devouring mother, and then you know, they, they, but they they don't they often don't talk about what happens after she gets a daughter back. There's there's bits of the myth and there's the Elysian mysteries and things and. So I started thinking about what the, what the myth meant and how that worked and looking at charts and you know, just tuning in on to, to everything where series was at events and things. So, but it's really interesting because the, I'll just tell you one story that, that I found really fascinating because you know the story of the myth is that um, she's abducted to the underworld mm -hmm. and that, um, you know, when she comes out from the underworld, it's, uh, it's, it's a negotiation. So one of the things I think series is about is negotiation. If you look at Michel Barnier's chart, he's got about, with the sun, he's got like all the, he's got series, he's got nearly every aspect of the planet. Mm. Um, so he's a good negotiator. But, um, but on the, on the certain, virtually the same day as series was made a planet again, uh, you remember Natasha Kampusch, who, who, she was that woman, the, she was the girl that had been abducted when she was 11 and she was, uh, she ran away and then he killed himself when she was 18. So she escaped the cellar and she'd been in the cellar. And that was the, the day that Ceres, I think she, she escaped on the 22nd of August, I think, and, the, and Pluto was, um, Ceres was upgraded on the 23rd of August in 2006. So the whole, I thought, you know, that's women coming up and out of the cellars, <laughs> young woman coming out, you know, the symbolism mm -hmm. of that, I think is amazing. You know, we had the moon as the mother and Venus as the gorgeous young woman and we didn't have the older woman. Mm -hmm. So Ceres for me is the, is the post-menopausal kind of, uh, Ceres is about rites of passage, I think. So the myth starts when Persephone is of age, you know, to be able to go have children and, the, and Ceres is then at men, it's sort of like menopausal age. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're both at sort of rites of passage, you know, at times. And then um, at the end of the myth, then they work together, but Ceres 
becomes the wise woman. She steps into her own power and says, I'm a goddess, you know, don't you know who I am? <laughs> and says, I will have a temple, thank you very much. And in the meantime, now I've got my daughter back, I'm going to negotiate, and, you know, you're not getting any food and stuff. But then they go on and she does the mysteries of life and she's about life cycles and, you know, things like that. So there's loads of rich material in that. And she's also the earth goddess and the green goddess and the, she's about you know, the environment and she does weather, I think, you know, she made winter and summer. Right. So yeah. since, to, I mean, what's interesting about 2006 as well is Al Gore's film came out in 2006, An Inconvenient mm -hmm. Truth. Mm -hmm. So there's loads of things that came out in 2006. Back to your personal work, if somebody wants to contact you, um, what's the best way, your website? Yeah, it's just fayblake.nl. Fascinating. Uh, very interesting talking with you, Faye. Thank you so much.